Elm Creek, 8 a.m. Broke to Billionaire Challenge. We're back. We're here to do this, man. Last month, we harvested two of our smaller fields, including the one right in front of us. Before the end of the year, we actually have one more harvest tomorrow in November. Over there, that big field will be ready to harvest too. Now, the one interesting thing this month that I was actually taking a look at is this guy right here. Not your traditional one to get super excited about, but it is a trailer. It's a pretty big one. It's very similar to our forage wagon, actually. It looks very, very similar, but this one is just a traditional trailer. The nice thing about this one is it can hold all of the grains, all the different products, and most importantly, grass and silage. So I think I'm going to go ahead and just get this bought and we'll get moving right into November. Now it's pretty big. I'm not sure how well the Massey Ferguson is going to be able to handle it, but the other two should be able to handle it just fine. Now we should have a gigantic harvest day tomorrow, which we'll be getting to very, very shortly. I just wanted to take advantage of getting this guy right before we got into that harvest tomorrow. I swear at this point, I'm averaging like one or two pieces of equipment bought per episode because <laughs> I am just crazy like that, man. I'm excited about this one, though. It's kind of the first piece of the puzzle for diversifying our crop, which we haven't had very much of. It's been a very singular process of what we've been farming, so I'm just excited to be mixing it up or potentially mixing it up very soon. Now, just because I'm parking it back here does not mean it's it's any less important okay <laughs> so don't make me feel self-conscious about that okay we do have that guy down here still bailing he's doing his thing uh, this is just an automated contract job so I'm just letting the AI handle this one while I do other stuff so I think we're just gonna go ahead and go right into November exciting purchase time but I gotta get back to sleep man November of year four time for the final harvest of the year I am just so excited for selling season this year. I am overjoyed to be getting there. So what's even more exciting about today specifically is that field over there is actually getting harvested. It is in stage two. Our two smaller fields, aka our starting one here and our disjointed field over there are actually also in ready to harvest, but just stage one. I'll probably still grab that grass just to get it started turning into silage. It's not going to be doing any more growing this year, so we don't need to worry about that. Now this is a big field and it is time to get our very first mow going here so we got a hired hand starting the mow here and i almost wish we had a secondary mower for getting this going already i think while he does that we have a little bit of water and chicken feed and other things to get going then we'll just get right into forage wagoning i think let's just start with the chicken feed we got a chicken out the coop he's digging into the bag man what are you doing chicken get back in there oh man that chicken got a move man we got a chicken on the loose sound the alarm sound the uh not very good with the pallet fork alarm too because uh yeah <laughs> oh i spoke too soon look at this oh man <laughs> i swear it always runs out right as i do that and lifting up these chicken feed bags with the pallet fork is always just so funny should probably get a uh, better front loader piece for doing this someday, but it, I have to admit, this is pretty funny. And besides, look, a master at his craft. Ooh, them chickens, we're gonna need to get some more feed. So this is one of those things, growing sorghum or barley or wheat would just allow us to fill that up so quickly. We also have a pallet full of honey. I mean, I'm just gonna grab all of these. He's still mowing out over there. I mean, that's gonna take a bit and we'll just be getting forage wagoning right after that. Probably just start work on that field while he's still mowing considering we're doing a triple harvest today oh baby a triple also i almost forgot i'm pretty sure it is egg selling day isn't it it is indeed egg selling day i always forget about november being a selling month i'm so used to selling everything in the winter and just to confirm tomatoes are january lettuce is january strawberries also january silage january so most of our stuff is january oh man i almost forgot about the canola all the Together. Um, canola, I have a whole bunch of it in storage over there, just ready to sell, and I will do that in December. Cannot forget to do that. Very, very important. So let's get these things in storage, man. I mean, you can see the, oh, <laughs> you can see me doing another front wheelie is what you can see. You can see our dude doing good work over there. He's starting the mow, the grand mow. Part of why I do front wheelies down here so much is this. De there's definitely a drop off from the, like, field itself and where we have that little cement pit there 
So it makes for some very, very funny moments, so to speak. So uh, let's just go ahead. I will go hook up to the water and get that all refilled. First things first. Oh, it's an exciting month. Should be a decent amount of eggs. And the nice part about eggs is, if I remember correctly, they're just going to the bakery right here. Yeah, bakery. And we should probably slow down time if we haven't already, because it does look like it, it's at its peak. So just doing our traditional around the horn a few times, getting this all filled up with water and taking it right back as I take the completely wrong route to get here. <laughs> I guess there's no wrong route when I'm just getting water, but still feels a little shitty. I swear these things take so much longer to fill up than you think they should. Then again, I don't really know how I'm siphoning up this little pond of water into a water tank like this. But, I, you know, you know, we have our ways. Our farmer ways. Don't question the farmer's code, brother. I almost got expelled from the uh, the guild of farmers there for my, my words. Our mowing brother is doing just that. He's mowing. He's doing a fantastic job. And I'm going to go get some more water, man. Almost filled to the brim on liquid fertilizer. We had a little bit left in the tank that we offloaded there when we first picked it up. So we just need to worry about getting some water. We already fed the chickens, although we need to get them some more food. Uh, big thing is selling those eggs today and just getting our harvest done. So it is a pretty exciting one. And we're also going to have all three tractors working. In fact, I could probably get this guy going on forage wagoning there. Now, there's always a risk <laughs> that they're going to like run into each other. But, you know, whatever. I can always sort it out. Lord knows I'll do enough AI hanging handling as is. I have practice, brother. Don't you worry about it for a minute. One thing I forgot is that this guy's done already. <laughs> It's actually funny, I had auto drive open and this guy is going, he's on field 71. He's gonna take these up to, I'm pretty sure Johnson's Farmer's Market. Feel the need to say that every single time. <laughs> All right, yeah, Johnson's Farmer's Market. I don't wanna say it that way again, let's be real here. All right, so the forage wagoning should commence here. Our mowing is going pretty well. Our water tank is completely filled with water and I have not emptied it out yet yet so we'll go do that next thing up on the agenda is just loading up them pallets and getting them sold off at the bakery right here uh, we don't have like a ton of egg pallets but I'll sell every single egg we have even if it's incomplete pallets should be a decent amount of money it's just one chicken coop so it's not like an insane amount of eggs if we uh, got a few more chicken coops and started growing some grain that is a lot of money it might be up next on the agenda honestly at least next up on the agenda Agenda after we're kind of doing some grain harvest. I think the profit margins on buying all of the food aren't nearly as good as growing your own. Barley's sounding really good since it just has such a high profit margin if we need to sell any off. It can make straw for our silage setup. And if we want to go into the production chain world, uh, using that to make flour and bread is always a fantastic option. So this is our last little delivery here of water and I will get right to loading up all them pallets. Well, that'll just keep doing its thing, I think. <laughs> I think. <laughs> uh, I should check to see how many pallets we have. So we have one more pallet and another like half a pallet there. And we only have four pallets of eggs. That seems really small. Do we have more in here? I am shocked at that. That is not very many pallets of eggs, but we'll get them all out. Probably just use the small trailer for this since there's not very many. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and grab this small trailer here. Get these delivered really quick. We are already like at the peak pricing here for it so nothing to worry about there i gotta remember to grab those uh incomplete pallets as well spend all year taking care of these chickens here them ladies in there them hens okay we got them all stacked up ready to go they're just going right here to the bakery just right around the corner one of the best parts of our farm is bakeries right here it's so close to a bunch of sell points so we'll just take these bad boys up get selling them look at that money look at that money going up Oh, baby. Sell them. Sell them, boy. Oh, okay. Is the bakery full? I, mean, I suppose we could just we could just leave this here. It'll sell as it becomes available. <laughs> so we got a cool 7,000 from that. It appears the bakery is filled with eggs. So uh, what's the secondary one here? It's a little bit less per thousand liters, but we also don't have that many. So I'll probably just drive it up right now. This is silly. I don't want to leave this here. And the bakery did not need as many eggs as I thought it would. So hey, if you are making cakes also I just see there's another little there's another little toy there look at that look at that good little guy right there look at that we will take this up to the farmers market get the rest of these sold 
Oh, he's, uh, I, I was like, man, this is a terrible line, but I realized he's just driving up to our little waypoint here before he gets started again on his route. This guy looks like he did a delivery of bales there. He's headed on back. That's excellent. This guy's very nearly done mowing. We'll just get him started on the other fields mowing here. And I just had an AI take that over for a sec, but I'll drive it from there. He's got a few more eggs, like... <laughs> Basically like one full pallet left. Friggin' bakery, man. They filled up quick. They didn't want my eggs no more. They're like, okay, we got enough eggs for the next 10 years, man. Okay, come back later. <laughs> They're still cranking out for my eggs last year. Oh, well, look at this. Another man up there to harass Farmer Jones. Look at him go. This is just a little taste. It's just a little, little drop, a little, mm, mm, a little appetizer for what we're going to be doing in January, February time. We are going to be making so much money. Farmer Johnson just isn't going to know what's going to hit him. Even though we are not selling any silage there, we would be selling it right there at the animal handler. The animal handler. Looks like our mowing boy did finish his mowing. That didn't take very long at all. I guess it's always the forage wagoning that takes a little bit longer. Not that much longer. That was very, very fast. That was a lot faster than I was expecting. So we'll get him started on the other ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Farmer Johnson. I know where to take these, man. All right, that guy's doing his thing. So we'll just get this guy started here on his next endeavor. So everybody's working. I, I'll just get this driven back, man. Why not? What was our final tally there on eggs? Let's take a look. A little look-see while I'm driving here very irresponsibly. Oh, almost ran into that guy. <laughs> Uh, I, the closer I get to Farmer Johnson's little, little farmer's market there, the more reckless I get. The more hungry for blood I get. Why are you such a menace up here, man? Get off my damn farm. Drop off your eggs and get, boy. Get out of here. Farmer Johnson's so mean and angry, man. Just because I'm a goofy little farmer, he's so mean to me. Why you gotta be so mean to me, man? All right, looks like $10,623 for uh, our eggs there. It's not too shabby. Looks like it produces about 10000 bucks a year nothing too wild honestly i don't even know how much money that's making with how much we spend on our wheat i should probably calculate how much we're spending on that wheat i mean i probably have to get like four bags a year if i had to guess and how much are these bags they ain't cheap eh, i mean so i'm probably making like five or six thousand after everything else and it's it's pretty easy and that income can dramatically increase if we start growing our own grains you start growing your own grains you, you build a few more chicken coops you get a little chicken empire going beyond chickens though been looking at some of the other animals too haven't messed around with farming sheep too much uh, i know that was suggested to me in the comments might be worth looking into because i didn't realize they eat grass and we very obviously produce a lot of grass other thing is cows i mean at this point i'm just labeling all the animals but cows are interesting because they can eat silage and we obviously make a lot of that and later on they can work in conjunction with grains they're a key part Part of making cakes obviously because you make the milk so while we got the trailer out i decided to go grab all that there lettuce tomatoes we'll put them in here oh yeah i forgot i had a cotton bale in there when, when do i sell that thing a random one that i had to go and skewer so it is november not till february all right and it's a pretty dramatic increase gotta remember to actually uh sell that thing <laughs> Look at that, pallet work done. Although, let's go ahead and just go get some more chicken feed while I'm out and about. I think I'll just go get about four bags of it. Might as well, we will be using it. Look at all these workers here. We got our forage wagoneer over there. We got our mowing guy right here. Mowing guy, our mower. What's that silage additive? Okay, the additive looking good down to down to 30% or from max rather. Okay, looks like this dude is taking another little delivery. Still got a decent amount of bales. Still got a decent amount to mow. This is just stage one grass, so the yield isn't gonna be fantastic here, but should definitely be getting it snatched up and put in them silos. When I'm done grabbing these bags maybe i will take up the forage wagoning i do enjoy doing that it is just so much faster than bailing used to be man uh one thing i suppose i could mow this meadow grass but it is just not it hasn't grown at all so i don't really know how much it's actually going to provide us as opposed to just waiting through the winter all right we got them bags delivered drop off this here trailer 
A lot of busy work running this here farm, man. Should be a pretty big selling season. I kind of forgot that we have so many pallets and we have a lot of bales left over from last year. So selling all of those will be big. During selling season, we're gonna be able to put all three tractors to work too, because we have that forage wagon that can transport silage. We have that trailer that can transport silage. And then we have that pallet and bale trailer for transporting all the stuff in our storage shed. So it is gonna be very, very busy. All three of them working, just going for it all at the same time. I think it's gonna be awesome. Next up, this guy will be fertilizing. So I'll probably just grab that and make sure we have enough fertilizer there. Forget what's all back here. We got seed. We got seeds. We got seeds, 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 seeds. Oh my, I have so many seeds over here that I forgot about. Just a whole bunch of bags of seed, man. All right, taking a look, this dude doing his thing. This guy just got done with another delivery there. This guy's mowing, he'll, he'll be done very, very soon. This guy is not able to do too much right now. I mean, I suppose I could get fertilizing if I wanted to. That feels kind of shilly to do while we're still grabbing all the grass off the field. I suppose I could send this guy, if there's any quick fertilizing contracts, I could just go do that real quick. Yeah, why not? 6,000. Do I have 2,000 in here? I don't, so I need to buy more fertilizer too. Whatever, buy some fertilizer, man. I think on top of that, I saw a good cultivating contract. I'll just get one of these going. Kind of want to stop the practice of having like, you know, five contracts all going at the same time, just because it's a lot to manage man especially when it's harvest i think my own harvest someday will be a lot easier to manage and automate just because i'm gonna have a lot better equipment and everything set up properly that it really shouldn't be too difficult like harvesting that field over there was extremely hands-off when i did it with the canola so we do just have the three going right now the baling is obviously almost done and we got the fertilizing going a field 32 i will just go grab that fertilizer and get this guy going i might take over the forage wagoning you can see our cultivator there going up the street as well. We got everybody working today. Everybody works, man. Ain't no free rides here, brother. All right, we will take over here. Looks like he was right here. Now we are the forage wagoneers. Man, there's a whole lot of grass on this field, man. So it's just going to be a crazy time. I'm really excited for the efficiency of the selling season as well. It's really crazy that really no matter what is going on on the farm, I'm able to find work for all three of these tractors. Right as I take over for forage wagoning, this guy's finishing up. So we'll get him sent on the other field and I'll probably just pick it up again. And this guy that I messed up is back to foraging. And honestly, <laughs> I'm sorry to do it, man. I'm taking over again. All right, we were we were on this end. Look at all that grass, man. Can you imagine running my old baling setup on this? Oh, wow. This That would literally take all day. That would literally take all day. It is just a lot of fun owning this much equipment at this point. I feel like I've reached a real point in the series where I can just have a lot of fun coming up with things for all the tractors to do. I feel like there's always something. With our current setup, it's really easy to have one tractor foraging and one tractor mowing at any given time. So that part alone is pretty nice. But then on top of that, the Massey Ferguson is really useful. There's just times I need that extra pallet work done, or I can just grab the fertilizer and get fertilizing things as the other ones are working. Or in the case of right now, while the other two are working doing something, I just send that Massey Ferguson on a quick fertilizing contract and that's just free money right there. Sure, you gotta fill it up and everything like that, but it is just so fast doing those and the AI are really good at the fertilizing contracts. My all-time favorite jobs are still cultivating just because they are amazing at those they they never seem to mess those up once i get them set on that course play they just go there and they get going for it now that twenty five hundred dollars in wage payment i don't like that so much <laughs> But that's okay. Once the Massey Ferguson is done, honestly, we could get him going on fertilizing this, or I could even handle fertilizing it while we get this guy in the forage wagoning. Might be a little easier that way. One issue I have with fertilizing our own field sometimes is they do have a tendency to miss the corners. I could probably adjust that, make things a bit tighter to make sure everything's covered, but just in the auto-generated courses, they cover about 99% of the field, maybe 95% of the field. And that's, that's pretty good. Very low effort, but 
pretty good payoff for what it is. I just love the ability to automate stuff, have the AI be able to work on something while I'm working on something here. And I also just love how this field looks, man. I mean, look at all them windrows, so pretty, all the grass, and we're just scooping it on up, spraying it with that additive, getting it into the silos and cooking up. Now we really should have a huge sales season. I don't know if we're even gonna get close to turning all of this into silage. We should earn at least what we did last year, if not 100,000, 200,000 more than we did last year. So last year for sold silage, I believe we sold right around 200K worth of it. With this field, we unfortunately got a pretty late start on it because it had the canola on it and I wanted to harvest that. And it is sitting over there. We, we get to sell that next month, so that'll be nice. We'll get some of our money back on buying this field. I'm hoping at least some of the grass that we're picking up today will be able to turn into silage. We'll see how much of that actually is. The one downside I've noticed of these silos is they are very slow at converting it compared to the bales. The bales felt like they were a bit faster, but the convenience factor here is just crazy. This is so much faster to harvest this way than with the bales. Okay, it appears we're done with that contract. Although I wonder if we still have more there. We must because he's still going back. This guy's doing his thing. We're mowing and we're scooping back to foraging. <laughs> Not quite baling, but this is the same stuff you put in the bales, so close enough, man. Uh, I do love the forage wagon as well here. Just scooping up the grass. It always looks like it's eating it, you know? It's like, and just storing it up there. Getting that third tractor actually ended up being a much more net positive than I thought it would be. As I mentioned earlier, it's been so easy to find work for all three tractors any given month. Much more than I originally thought. When I first bought this green tractor, this little green tractor, I thought I was going to have to sell the Massey Ferguson. I didn't think there was any reason to have it. And the only reason I even kept the Massey Ferguson at all was because it was only worth 25 k I was like, you know, maybe I'll keep it for a month or two. There's no reason to sell it immediately. Immediately, right because we weren't even needing the money to buy this giant field yet it's been great though having the ability to run all this stuff at the same time it is just oh man I am so bad about that <laughs> I'm, I'm like completely stuck here so we are officially done mowing there not too shabby at all not too shabby at all that is the last time we cut this grass in year four now could get some of this meadow grass, but it is incredibly short right now. We just mowed it, what, last month? So I don't even think it's worth cutting, man. I, I know I've said how much it's worth cutting. I don't think it's worth cutting. I ain't doing it, not, not this time at least. Next time this grass is ready to harvest, that's when we'll do the whole thing. And that will not be until next year. Guys getting this cultivating on. And I mean, the tank tractor is good for now. I don't think there's anything else needing to be done right this second. Looks like we are just offloading the very last of the bales from that gigantic contract. One of our favorites to take pretty much every time it pops up. It is just such a good one. It gets so much money should give us a bit of extra harvest income to end it as well. Look at that, 2,000. Ooh, $22,000, easy peasy. So in terms of what we have left to do, it's really just getting the rest of this grass scooped up and then fertilizing them fields. We got everything mowed and handled there already. Should be a pretty relaxed day to end the year, our very final harvest. I'm just looking so forward to selling everything. All right, two out of three fields done. We'll just go ahead and get this emptied out to get onto the small field and we're looking pretty good. The other thing I was checking while I was emptying out this grass here is our canola so the top price is usually 723 but it looks like we're already at 812 for the day so i'm considering just going ahead and trying to look to sell this today uh to goldcrest valley now we already got it in the silo over there where you need to deliver it with the train so all we really need to do is rent that train and get it sold ship it on out to goldcrest valley man so just coming on over to our final field for the final forage 
of the year, of year four. This will be the very last of the grass that we grab here. So I'll probably just keep an eye on these prices today, see if we can get it peaked out. But 812 already looking really nice. Okay, I noticed the 812 already went down to 811. So I think it's time just go ahead and get that sold. I think I'll buzz over in the Massey Ferguson real quick here. We'll just get the train rented and get our canola out on the rails. They let you store your grain over here for free. So we have just had our canola chilling in these silos, ready to sell whenever. It does look like a train is coming. We're barely gonna miss it. I don't know if that actually affects when you're able to rent it and when you aren't. Uh, but either way, unfortunate. Hopefully it doesn't actually affect it. All right, we got it rented. I don't know when it, oh, it's backing up. I wonder if this is our train. Did I get over here in time? Let's see. Oh, it's stopping. <laughs> Okay, it looks like this is our locomotive. So uh, we want to go back to this grain pool just right over here. Okay, let's see. So uh, yeah, we have our 54,000 liters of canola. So we'll get that filled up there. You can see it in the bottom right there. Yeah, it's filling it up pretty good. Look at that. Almost half full on one uh, one tank there. We'll just move her on up here. It costs $1,000 to rent this train, but the difference in money we get and what we don't is pretty wild. So look at that, $44,000. So that was just a little bit of a return on investment as I take out that sign. Beautiful. Good work, Massey Ferguson. <laughs> so that was just a bit of a return of investment on our gigantic field over there. It was covered in canola and we were obviously able to harvest all of that, get it sent off. 44,000 was a bit more than I was actually expecting there. Now we probably spent a good 15, 20 grand on leased equipment just to harvest all that. But I mean, that's still some good gains right there. More than 20K in profit or just right there, just from harvesting that. Now, granted, I spent over 300K for the field. So <laughs> you gotta take it with a little bit of a grain of salt. Uh, but yeah, pretty good, pretty good. I was not expecting to get that much. It helps that we got one of those like great demand. We just randomly got one of those today. So was able to take advantage and sell especially given how our finances be looking these days oh man yeah 450k in loans we're definitely gonna get some of that paid off this month with 93k in our pockets but still doesn't it doesn't feel fantastic <laughs> And with that final little scoop up right there, our harvesting is done for the month. We'll go get the rest of this dumped and get ready for next month. Main thing we have left to do here in year four is just selling. Selling season, baby. Oh, it's going to be a big one, too. Everyone's favorite time of year. Woo -hoo -hoo. Selling season, selling season. So we're going to go right into selling season. So that means we're just going to more or less go right through November and December here, or we already played November, but we'll be going through December and January. January is our selling season, so it's really just uh, skipping December here. I'll keep an eye out on sales, make sure our loan is paid down, but I think we're good to go to just go ahead and let that cook up, get our silage all fermented in them tanks. Oh baby, I'm ready for another long, cozy winter here in the tractor. Wouldn't you want to sit here hibernation for two months? Because I would. We will, we'll, we'll jump between tractors. I, I, I open up the door of each one and I just kind of jump between the two of them. Like, whoo, I'm in here now. I jumped right over the Massey Ferguson. And then whoo, just do a little jump to and from. All right, enough goofing. Enough goofing. It's farming time. By that I mean time to pay down the loan, of course. <laughs> did decide to go ahead and put down another generator just at the other end of the farm. I kind of like how that little windmill looks there. I just like how it looks. It kind of fits the map pretty well. Oh man, they really want me to get harvesting. And this thing has popped up again. The exact same. Also, I see the fast bail. Oh, the December sales are getting me emotional. If I had the money, I would probably just snap by this. Let's be real here. Oh, well, we'll have more pop up as time goes on. We'll have more pop up. It's just always so sad to pass up on a harvester man always so sad great demand at red marble bowling restaurant huh what could they possibly want there man it is bright and early january morning you can barely even see my outline 
and I am keeping my eye on these prices. It looks like we've already peaked at the animal dealer, so it might just be time to get selling, man. It's bright and early. It's a little too dark, man. <laughs> I can't see anything. Shouldn't go down too much. Just get, get to where I can actually see, man. So we're at 194. And baby, it's selling season, man. It's selling the season for silage. Now, we're actually gonna have all three tractors working here. So we're gonna have these two on the grass silage, and that should empty out pretty quick. These two being the tank tractor and the green tractor over there. They'll be they'll be grabbing grass, and by grass, I mean the silage out of the uh, silos there. And then all those bales will actually be handled by the bale trailer over there. And we'll probably just put the Massey Ferguson on that one. So without further ado, let's uh let's break in this, this trailer we got here. We actually haven't used this thing. It's funny how we got two of the same same model here they look very similar although it's slight difference they're both crone before i do anything here let's take a look so we currently have eight hundred and thirty five thousand actually we'll just round up eight hundred and thirty six thousand liters of silage that is crazy and what's even crazier is we got another seven hundred eighty six thousand liters already in our silo we might actually end up uh having to expand out our storage a little bit if we we want to keep going with our silage uh silos here because this is just not this is not big enough man it is uh whoa <laughs> we're, we're gonna have to think about that but for the time being let's get some silage Ooh, it's got that dark color to it, huh? So he's heading on out. Let's fill this guy up with silage as well and get it driven out to the animal handle. This is just going to be so exciting. Almost forgot that we have that cotton bale in there too. We don't sell that till next month and we also sell our honey. So we got a bit of, bit of sales offset next month too. So it's going to be a very big selling month because we got all the silage to sell. And then we also have the tomatoes and lettuce to sell. Okay, 10,000 from the very first run. So our sales have begun. I'll have to see how much we get from that second one as well. Now the Massey Ferguson, we're gonna be doing some pallet delivering today, as well as bale delivering. Look at all those pallets in there and look at all those bales. All of that is being sold outside of honey and the, the one cotton bale we have. Those will wait until next month. But we'll get this guy pulled out of storage. All right, another 10,000 just right there. So it looks like each run is gonna be about 10,000. But I mean, you can tell the money is just gonna be crazy. <laughs> It is just gonna be crazy high. So one thing I wanted to check before I forget is just how many uh, bales of silage we have too. How much more are we adding here? So we have 90 bales at 3,500 liters each. So we have over uh, another 300K of bales just right here. Offloading these bales is exciting, but at the same time, it is, it is kind of sad. Oh man because these are the very last of our marshmallows. A moment of silence for our mushroom, our fallen mushroom comrades. That's over a million liters in this sale with an additional about 800,000 or 700,000 liters in our silo tank there, still fermenting into silage. That is crazy. <laughs> Beering off the road. That's why you don't check your phone in the middle of driving. But I'ma do it anyways, man. You can't stop me. Only the other cars on the road can stop me. So we'll swing this around, take them belts off, and look at that. All sold for 17k. Beautiful. And there's just gonna be a few more runs of this, man. Ooh, money, money, money. And once we get those bales sold, tomatoes and lettuce as well. January, February, our money just goes crazy just goes crazy man the upside and downside of having all of these in such a short period of time for selling uh because we're waiting for those peak pricings also what up tank tractor and what up another 10k it makes it so it's like this you know really flat curve all year for money i mean we get a little bit of property income and also slightly offset income by selling our eggs a few months before this in november but other than that it is just completely flat and then this gigantic spike where we sell everything in february and, or uh, january and february we do most of our selling right in January and then, you know, a few months later, I've likely spent most, if not all of it. <laughs> oh man, I already, I already made one naked. Look at that. What's so funny is not that I am going to, because we all know I have more than enough tractors right now, but if I had a fourth tractor, I'd actually be able to use it right now. That is so funny. Uh, I have that other tiny little trailer that I could just be loading pallets upon and uh, selling them. I think I only need to do a couple more 
more runs here on the uh, Massey Ferguson. Do you think I can pass this tank tractor? I think I'm moving ever so slightly faster. Yeah, I am, especially now that I reach top speed. Oh boy, but then we got this jabroni up here. Don't turn, man. What the? Hey, that guy completely, that, that was actually the AI's fault. <laughs> I watched that one happen. You know what? Sometimes I, I'm a real jerk to all the people in this city, but that dude completely blew through that stop sign. Messing up my workers over that. I can't believe it. Disgusting. Despicable. Oh boy, we gotta we gotta speed things up here, big guy. Oh, okay. Off-roading a little bit. We gotta pass the tank tractor. I got the higher top speed, but he's got more get up and go. And those tracks, they get the traction, you know? But look, I'm pulling ahead. Sorry, tank tractor. You are beastly in so many ways. We are a touch slow. You are a touch slow. The one downside of the almighty tank. Really is not one of my uh, selling periods without a naked bale. Although starting next year, no more bales, man, because we're selling all of them today. Says that one cotton bale. But hey, who knows? Bales could make a glorious return in the form of cotton bales. I discussed several different production chains in my last episode that I was kind of mulling over. And one thing I kind of left out was cotton. Cotton's pretty, pretty great. Uh, take it up to the spinnery and they can make it into fabric that you can take to make into clothes, which is pretty, pretty cool. That's a good one. And I got to start thinking about what I want to do with this money, man. The smartest thing is probably just get some more land. Maybe another big splash purchase, maybe a couple of smaller fields. Just have to see. I think my plan right now is to go ahead and get these sales going, get all that money in my pockets and pay off that loan. We did end up going pretty steeply into debt to afford that big field over there, but I think it's very much going to pay off. Even if we don't get that loan fully paid off this year, we're more than sure to get it fully paid off next year. So I am not worried about that at all. So the very last of our marshmallow bales. Oh, so sad. Try not to cry. I'm trying not to cry and failing. Oh, now you think I can sneak in front of this guy real quick? Oh, I did not sneak in front of him. I just straight up ran into him. <laughs> We should check to see if we are capped out here. Oh, grocery mart's actually higher. Uh, fast food restaurant's technically higher. And the bowling restaurant's actually the highest. So they actually need to go to separate places. That's kind of crazy. But I think that's just one of the fun little variations they have in this game, where sometimes places can just have a crazy high demand and end up paying a little more than they usually would. So, I mean, what, a few episodes back, I was talking about how if you see the bowling alley, you done messed up, you went the wrong way. And now, of course, <laughs> I'm going to the bowling alley and selling, man. So I don't think I, uh, the, the adage held true forever. So that was a solid 16K just from lettuce there, and we still got more to sell. Oh boy. Sorry about your trash can. For the lettuce, we had one full trailer here and then just a few extra. You can see them kind of riding in the middle there of all the miters. But I'm guessing it's at least two trailers. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh, uh, yapping and taking turns too quick. All right, well, we got there eventually. <laughs> it took significantly longer than I thought it would, but we got there, we got there. I've only gone to the bowling alley accidentally, so <laughs> it's kind of funny to be going there intentionally this time. And the Massey Ferguson, being the lowest horsepower of all our, all our tractors, is really struggling to get up these hills, man. Oh, this reminds me of uh, Balin with the Vicon Fast Bale on our farm, man. The funny thing is we're still going faster than what we were going <laughs> with the Fast Bale, because it would regularly get down to four miles per hour, and we were still going six there, man, so. All right, where? Where do they want these pallets here at the bowling alley? I assume over here. Yeah, I see it. Okay. Oh boy, right there, man. <laughs> I just undid this. The first time you do business with a farmer and this is what you see in the parking lot. <laughs> What do you do? Do you even want these tomatoes anymore, man? Because I don't know if I would want these tomatoes anymore. All up on the ground in a bowling alley parking lot. Which, come on, a bowling alley parking lot got to be one of the nastiest parking lots to ever exist. You know there's just cigarettes and, and beer bottles all over the place. Okay, they really do me like that. You think they're coming out and grabbing the tomatoes like in between frames? Like they take a puff of the cig? throw the ball down the alley here you know they throw it down the lane get a strike and then come out and proceed to buy tomatoes 
Really did not see myself selling at the bowling alley of all places. Farm and Sim takes you to some wild and wonderful places you would never expect to be at otherwise. Oh man, they got the arcade machine out in the alley. I gotta, I gotta take a look at this. What's going on? Oh my, somebody smashed it, man. Jet Set Farming 2148. Can I play? Collect? Oh! You found a cow. There are nine more cows to be found. All right, so that's the little uh, that's the little Easter egg on this map. I had no idea. Boom, boom, a doo, ba doom, boom, doom, do. The joy of bailing. Man, they really uh, they're really making me feel bad about abandoning my bailer, huh? And talking so much smack about it while I'm delivering these guys. Six miles an hour. I think some of the best ways to spend money right now probably just getting a bit more field, a bit more uh, a bit more land. Probably looking into some sort of silo, especially one that has the same capacity or bigger, but processes things a bit quicker. I would like to be able to sell more of it at once rather than floating another, you know, 700,000 liters of grass is just crazy. That's like how much we sold today. So it does feel kind of bad to just have that be sitting in there for the whole year because that's, you know, potentially liquid cash we could be using to spend on other things like expanding. All right, last of the maters have been sold. So if we take a look, you can see our sold products here for 42,000, nearly $43,000. That is pretty much solely from the greenhouse because that was just tomatoes and lettuce is what we sold. So that greenhouse back there has already paid for itself and we are very much in the green. Now I do believe, oh man, I just noticed we got the sign on the trailer. That is awesome. <laughs> I don't even know how that happened, but I kind of love it. So as we go fill up this here Massey Ferguson, it's hard not to just think about everything we've done to lead up to this point, everything we're continuing to do. This year was really exciting because we got to get that gigantic field just next to the oil mill over there. That was a really exciting goal that I had been looking forward to for a while. So to see kind of the fruits of my labor there are pretty crazy. So with our current silo set up here, it's underneath harvest income. You can see $164,000. Now, a lot of that comes from the fact that the silo has just been a lot slower. And as I've said and probably talked to death at this point, I'm just going to be looking into setups to make that a lot quicker. I can always sell our current one to get some of that money back, even though I really do like how it looks. Looks really nice. I think it fits in with our little homestead look we got here. I mean, this farm just looks fantastic, man. I'm just so happy with what I've been able to build, how much money I've been able to make. And I think this challenge really does have a bright future. We have have just such an operation here. <laughs> We are making so much money. I think it's just going to continue to increase and increasing and increase. And while getting all the way up to a billion dollars is pretty crazy and pretty wild to think about, especially when you think in terms of, you know, how much money I have in my pocket is not even close to how much you need for that billion dollars. We're going to get there. And I, uh, I don't know. I just have a really good feeling based on how things have been going. I hope you've been enjoying as much as I have. I've had a lot of fun with this challenge. It's been great. I hope to see you in year five. We still have a bit to sell tomorrow, but you know, it's hard not to feel like the end of the year is when we saw all that silage, man. Uh, anyway, tons of fun. Hope you guys have been enjoying it too, and I'll see you in the next one.